And how do you improve a team that, as you said, was third? How do you make a jump? How do you improve a bench? Where do you get veterans? Where do you get size? Where do you get strength? Where do you angle things out? How do you attempt to improve upon your rebounding, whatever it may be? One of the more interesting, for lack of a better word, because I'm not totally sure interesting fits in this context, but one of the reports that is out there, in addition to everyone's perceived, or at least the Pacers' perceived interest in Gordon Hayward is... Celtics are said to be, and we've heard this before, keeping an eye on what is going on with the Cavaliers contract talks with Andre Drummond. Now, my first instinct when it comes to Andre Drummond is you run the other way. I want no part of Andre Drummond in Boston, not because I I don't like the guy. He didn't kick my dog. It's just not a good defender, can't shoot, can't stretch the floor, doesn't seem to fit Brad Stevens' system, makes a whole lot of money. Yes, he improves your rebounding. Yes, he can give you some points on the inside. I just don't really like the fit, but, and I'll, I'll, I'll save this for after what you have to say, uh, you know, some, some, I don't know, a, attempts at compelling viewpoints looking the other way as to how he does work in is, uh, you know, could be entertained. I, how do you feel as I ramble on, how do you feel about Andre Drummond in the Celtics uniform? If getting him probably means giving up Gordon Hayward, by the way, just in an effort to even make the money work. Well, I don't want to say he's not a good shooter, but if you try to kick your dog, he might miss. <laughs> you know, listen, Andre Drummond is a great rebounder. The Celtics haven't had that. Although the Celtics have been a, a very good rebounding team uh, mm-hmm. over the last few years. Nobody really pays much attention to that because it's not – there's a lot of focus on the center position. And I get it because of what Bam Adebayo did. He was the MVP of the series. I don't think there's yeah. any question about that at, at 6'9". Uh, and it masked unfor- – it was an unfortunate ending. We talk about how the season had an unfortunate ending. It was a very unfortunate ending for Daniel Tice, considering the year that he had, which was pretty phenomenal. And speaking of guys that are going to get paid uh, at some point. And, again, it's one of those things like, are, are you upgrading? Is Andre Drummond an upgrade from Daniel Tice? Well, that really depends on how close you watch the NBA now. Because this isn't the NBA of five years ago or ten years ago or 20 years ago. Is Andre Drummond going to give you the defense that Daniel Tice gave you this year? And not just against other bigs, right? That's the old school basketball mentality. But now Daniel Tice is, is guarding point guards in pick and rolls and things like that. Think about what the NBA game is now. That's how you have to situate your roster. And unfortunately, there are players, I mean, Drummond is sort of one of them who, um, like Jaleel Okafor. Man, that dude just came into the league at the wrong time. He came into the league at the wrong time. Mm. This sort of happened to, you know, Rondo has had this fascinating career arc where the game changed around him and suddenly a guy that couldn't shoot was, it was tough to get on the floor. And he found a way, this is what makes, you know, Rondo special, is that he found a way to sort of stay in the league and work around that. But the game sometimes can change, you know, around you. Devin Harris was going to be one of the top point guards in the league when he first came in. He was really, had this great year. I think he made the all-star team one year. With the net, and then the league just sort of changed around him, and different guys came in at that position. Andre Drummond now is really more of a – he's a change of pace role, like Serge Ibaka with Toronto, sort of a change of pace role player, except he can't – you know, obviously he's not going to shoot. You have to be able to shoot now. It's just – it's just invaluable with the way the game has played. And that three-point line, by the way, people say, what's coming next? There's going to be an adjustment where, all right, everything's a three-point line now, so eventually it's going to come back. No. You know what's going to happen? Trey Young, Damian Lillard, that's where the game is going. It's like forget that five feet behind the three-point line is where the NBA game, that's the next trend. The, the, floor, the, the only way to extend the floor now is that way, offensively, to make bigs come even farther out to where you can get guys. Guys now in high school and college are going to be able to start shooting that shot because they see Trey Young and Damian Lillard do it, and they know that's going to be a part of the, you know, their ticket to get to the NBA. The guys that can make the 30-foot shots are going to be making $10 million a year, whatever the equivalent of that is in five or 10 years. So that's what would make me nervous about Andre Drummond. He could win you some games. In the course of an 82-game season, Andre Drummond's going to give you some games, but he's just as likely to be a player that you get into a playoff series. And you know what? Like Cantor, Cantor who had, again, Cantor had a very good year and was very effective in spots, but there were certain times he wasn't going to play in the playoffs because of the matchup you get. And I think Andre Drummond, are you going to pay $25, $30 million a year for a guy who might not see the floor in a specific playoff series because of the matchup. So a buddy of mine who comes on the show from time to time, just to poke in and give us some stats and things like that. Uh, this, this isn't a, a stats analysis, but was sending me a slew of texts this morning about this Andre Drummond thing. And I'm going to tell you just some of what he wrote to me. 
saying that uh, it's not his favorite thing to do with the Hayward contract. Not terrible either. This is obviously trading for Drummond. He's an incredibly flawed player. Still young, has all the skills you'd want from that position. Time Lord's not ready. Tice's a 20-minute-per-game guy. Drummond's best year was when Stan Van Gundy kind of let him play uh, the way Miami used Bam last year. He's got some skills as a passer, a handoff guy. Defense, obviously, is a problem, but maybe Brad can get something out of him. I like the idea of him on an expiring contract. And I think uh, adding on to that as much as anything, especially if you were to deal Hayward for him, helps get you under the salary tax. 